I'm done playing all of the ranged DPS on beta with the tier sets and the hero talents. And uh, I'm going to be ranking them today. And some of them are big winners and some of them are turbo losers. Which one is you? And before we go in, I do have to say that 90% of this uh, tier list is recorded just before the Hunter rework that has been announced. So we'll talk about the Hunter specs at the end after I actually get to play them, considering that right now I would probably put them into F tier and we don't have an F tier. So that says a little bit about Hunter in the War Within. Starting off with Affliction Warlock, which is now in its third version of the rework. Damn! It's been going through some quite a few changes and some moved around in the talents and to be fair it's actually not feeling too bad. I do have to insert my personal bias here a little bit because I mean I have to that's the whole point. Overall in the spec design part Affliction is not doing too bad. I think functionally it's superior to the live one in the way that you want to build towards a specific damage profile. You don't want to feel like you're wasting talents or you're forced into talents or that you're losing giga single target to get AoE or you're using giga AoE to get single target. From that point of view, it's a little bit better. Siphon Life being reworked into a passive is also perfectissim perfectissimo. And the hero talents are actually super, super pog. I do feel like Affliction is still just slightly not quite there, at least not in the same way as Demo and Destro are. Dark Lair still feels incredibly lackluster. I would kind of really want Dark Lair to do some actual damage. Now, I would say that this is just tuning in the end, and tuning can always change by the time the expansion launches but dark lurk has kind of been poop for two expansions now i think it might have been a little bit better in shadowlands but i do have to say that i'm not a fan of malefic rapture spam i would have loved seed of corruption spam all day every day in aoe in dungeons and i'm sad to see it go you're gonna be using seed of corruption just to apply aoe corruption which is still a purpose for the spell but rapture is just not the same like seed is just more explosive way more engaging and I feel like we've lost a uh, death of playstyle that was really cool for that. With that out of the way, I do want to put Affliction at the top of the B tier. It could very well be A tier, it's still a little bit from S tier and it could be an amazing spec. I feel like it plays way better in the War Within than it does in Dragonflight. B tier is kind of like average, it's kind of like the bell curve of a graph if, if you would like to. And I think it's a good place to start. And now let me put on some glasses because testing all these range specs to rank them properly has been so much easier with Outplayed, the sponsor of today's video. And that's because Outplayed just gives us proper easy tools to use to record our gameplay. Not only can you get hours upon hours of footage, but you can also edit and clip it from the same software. If you go into your sessions, select what you want to edit and then click the little button here, it will open the clip options and you can play with the length, name it, export it and then just use it as bragging rights online because you did so much damage that one pool in that one dungeon. Outplayed is a free to use recording software with a library of thousands of games it is compatible with and to get yours you just need to click the link down below and you will be supporting your boys here at Marcellian Online in the process as well. Thanks Outplayed for sponsoring this video. I don't like to wear glasses anymore. So we're gonna be going into augmentation. Holy crap. Dude, Evoker has been probably the second biggest surprise for me in terms of fun in the beta and with the tier. Tier sets actually don't do that much for almost any of the specs in this list. It <laughs> augments them a little bit and that's good. But the hero talents are actually really cool. And Chrono Warden has been the bee's knees. like. If your throat is parched after screaming for two days and drinking really, really, really cold water the other day and now you're like talking like this, playing Chrono Warden Augmentation is like drinking sweet wine that caresses your throat and makes it all smooth and soft and ready to talk in a really, really good voice. That was so satisfying. I think Chrono Warden is probably the second best hero talents that evokers have period and it has been a blast for augmentation granted augmentation still kind of plays similarly to live it's bland ish um but it's a fun it's a simple spec it's fun it the complexity comes from actually positioning yourself with your party and making sure that you're buffing them properly although augmentations on live i don't think you have this particular spell which i think is called chosen power it's like this little blue eye that once you activate it, you actually see your party members highlighted when they use a powerful cooldown. 
I'm not 100% sure what those cooldowns are in the database of WoW, how the game calculates which cooldowns those are, but I would imagine there'll be like two minute cooldowns and higher, maybe even one minute cooldowns or higher, and then you can actually time your Breath of Eons and actually see exactly where your party members are and aim them. That feels like it's a lot better than on live and that definitely helps a little bit. I mean, it definitely lights up when uh, Fire Mage is used combust, so, you know, what else would you ever want? With that out of the way, I do have to say that augmentation has been A tier. Very fun. I was never a fan of the gameplay. I thought it was fine, but I never really enjoyed it ever since it was introduced into the game. But Chrono Warden changed my mind. And Scale Commander is not bad either, but Chrono Warden is the shit. I want to go home. I really don't want to talk about this next because it's near, dear and close to my heart. And my heart is very far from Marcellian's heart, who hates Balanced Druid. And now I feel like my heart is getting closer to his heart, and I hate Balanced Druid, and this is way more corny and cheesy than I intended it to be. But that's kind of how Balanced Druid feels to me. Oh my god, I have no idea what Balanced Druid is supposed to do. I have been, I have to put it into F tier, I'm sorry, it's not bad. This is overly emotional. I'll put it into C tier, okay? It doesn't play that bad. However, the direction and the changes for Balanced Druids are systematically worse and worse with every change that they make. And this is maybe from my personal experience. You've lost Arcanic Pulsar. Why? Why? That was so good. And this Destro Warlock essentially proved this. I don't know exactly why Arcanic Pulsar has gone. I don't know if they've made a blue post about it. And if they have, I must have missed it. Because Arcanic Pulsar just gave you those in-between big cooldowns windows of peak gameplay when you just procged out that Celestial Lyman or Incarnation. Which was what made Balance Read really fun. Because it's a very predictable spec with all close to no RNG whatsoever. The changes to the little Fury Dragon just being there and doing damage isn't really impactful considering that that's a single target and on live it doesn't really do amazing damage. It's not like it's a Warlock pet that just summons and just destroys everything. And it used to be the source of overall damage buff for you on live with the capsule that is now replacing it, which now we have lost. So I'm not sure how I feel about it. We've also lost Arcanic Pulsar. You now get to play Orbital Strike, which that's great because that's something that I would have wanted to play for a long time. But together with Arcanic Pulsar, because then you have little in-between burst moments as you wait for your incarnation to come off cooldown. And that was needed for a spec as predictable as Balanced Druid. We've consistently, every rework seemed to lose one more bit that makes Balanced Druid fun. And the Hero Talents, although they're fine, they're better than they were in, uh, when they announced them, doesn't feel like it brings Balanced Druid back. I was so disappointed that out of pure emotional angst, I wanted to put into F tier, but it's not that bad. It plays fine and it could have some really, really cool moments, but overall it has some still major issues that it seems like they're being worked on on almost every other dot spec except balance rate or ramp spec rather where the ramp is still turbo boring you still have to tap target moonfire so many times and then at least one or two sunfires and then do your orbital strike and then the pack is at half hp and you're like why am i even pressing cooldowns at this point unless you're obviously playing super super high end content which is usually keys because in raids it doesn't feel like in raids is any better maybe i'm wrong we'll see when raid testing will release but it's not no it's this is not a chief i've I'm, I'm 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 losing a little bit of hope for balance i'm sorry but that's how it is arcane mage though holy bananas batman all the way into a tier you go i don't know if it's i i think it's probably a little bit in front of augmentation in the way that it plays spell slinger has been really fun and really ridiculous with all of the little effects and shards and lances and little shot things all over the place and overall arcane just plays way better in the world within with the talent rework with how kind of the tier set works as well but with the talent directions and how you're building to your points if you're not building towards arcane harmony which i don't think that's still the name for the talent it might be where you just cast arcane missiles a lot and then buff your arcane barrage maybe you play that you can actually get i believe all of the capstones for arcane that's pretty cool but the gameplay implications of playing all of the hero talents spell slinger and sun fury really change and kind of alter arcane in a neat way particularly spell slinger you kind of have to use arcane blast in aoe to consume another precision to spawn those those spell slinger shardy things I, I keep forgetting what they are assuming that that's the correct way to play because that's the intuitive way to play by reading the tooltips of your hero talents 
and that just means you kind of eliminate arcane explosion from your rotation in aoe now that's interesting and different and i'm all for that it is a little bit weird considering that the tier set also buffs arcane explosion so it feels like there's a discrepancy between that and the design of spell Swinger, but be that as it may it is really fun and definitely changes your rotation it's not as complex and as insanely specific as it is on live but it does have its layer of difficulty because people have been pointing this out that they don't want arcane to be simple they love the engaging playstyle and i think it's still there there is a different kind of skill expression i would like to say i cannot honestly say if it's more difficult or not because if you play the live version of arcane it's more punishing but i don't particularly feel like it's necessarily difficult because you do the same rotation no matter what you do but now with the war within you might have some slight changes here and there demonology warlock now i have to preface this before i go into the next two warlock specs that the versions of the warlock specs that i have tested that you can check on our uh, live stream vod on youtube have been the most fun i've had in world of warcraft in years or ever i understand that some of the functionality of these sounds might not make it to live and i will be sad if they change it but i understand why they will change it i hope they don't because why would you ever want to make WoW less fun? Some tuning will probably have to happen to kind of tune this down because you can spawn, if you're playing Demonology, you can spawn your uh, Doom Guards quite a, quite a bit if you snap or snipe rather the low HP targets with your Doom. That is very fun and engaging gameplay to do and you get a lot of Doom Guards. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to say from a generic Demonology Warlock perspective that probably doesn't apply to high-end warlock players which i think the game should stop being designed around and it should be designed around the average player and let the op players that play to the one percent push the highest of keys and do mythic rating actually break the game that is more fun and it's a much more enjoyable environment to be in however i was able to spawn quite a few doom guards and stacking those doom guards up which you cannot really do too much it's not that degenerate because you can only do this as the pack is dying and doom guards are really good when the pack is not dying and it is actually up so it's slightly counterintuitive to how you want to use those doom guards so that is the trade-off that you can think about by spamming this mechanic and getting a lot of doom guards but once you get into a new pack having three or four doom guards all launch their shadow ball volley at the same time is incredibly fun but they will likely just disappear after like one or two casts because you've been spamming them in the previous pack so they don't have a lot of life left for the new pack that is fun that is the downside uh, that or the trade-off rather for having this mechanic but it is very satisfying you feel like a lord of commander of doom you could have this style of gameplay as an alternative to implosion because it doesn't feel like you have time to, to use implosion very much and i really enjoyed this different version of demonology once again, I'm not sure if this is intended how it's going to be, but it is how I had the most fun in World of Warcraft ever. So I'm going to be putting Demonology into S tier. Whether you play Soul Harvester or Diabolus, either one, they're incredible. They're the most satisfying visual hero talents in the game currently. Some of the most interesting mechanics that they have. You can play whatever build version variation you want. And Demonology is just going to be loads of fun. Similar with Destruction as well. Destruction released to some of the most negative reception to a rework warranted by the way for for good reasons and that has been flipped almost 180 and now it is incredibly fun might still have some work to do with some of the capstones and some of the tuning there however if you do play the new avatar of destruction or whatever it's called the new R R ritual of ruin mechanic they used to summon the blasphemy now summons the overfiend which is a tiny little smolderon you will have a lot of fun and the tiny little smolderon spawning chaos bolts just is a really good trade-off in aoe because if you see particularly this footage right here oh my god this was so satisfying this was particularly with hell color because the wither actually has a chance to give you a stack of the ritual and you get more and more of a feeling this is essentially the infinite scaling that destruction was so fun for that i thought that destruction was unique and niche for that's something that once again that you cannot really abuse all of the time it's very niche and specific and i think when you have infinite gameplay potential in niche specific situations just alleviates and elevates the overall feel of what world of warcraft should be this is why world of warcraft is a much better rpg in terms of combat than probably every other rpg definitely than every other mmo on the market this goes into s tier as well it was insanely fun please devs don't change this maybe tune it so it's not ridiculous but not too much because this will bring a lot of players to the class incredible fun 
fire mage as well i've been simping i've been a fire mage simp for the longest time and this is still to this day as much fun as i've had on the warlock specs i do feel like fire mage is the perfect spec in the game in terms of how it's designed and how it functions with the the hero talents and because of the tier set it actually ranks in front of the warlocks warlocks have kind of boring tier sets they're just fun without mage is fun without and has an amazing tier set because listen if the dev that's working on fire mage is watching this video i do have to say friend you really enjoy playing world of warcraft and you really enjoy playing fire mage because it's so obvious when you look at anything that's happening with fire mage that whoever is making fire mage really really digs and gets world of warcraft it is so fun the types of builds that you have access to different play styles variations fixes to certain types of damage profiles you now have proper execute damage you can play a simpler build you can play a more complex build to do more damage you can play proc based build living bomb phoenix flames flame strikes ignite it is incredible it is a joy to play 100 recommended best spec design wise slightly less fun than the warlocks but in terms of overall everything that's under the hood it is there and it is good frost mage is also very very high i want to put it a little bit behind augmentation because it's still slightly less interesting with the spec talents it's not in the level of mage i don't think it received any rework to its actual spec i would have hoped that it got some style of rework because it is still going in the right direction where you have some more identity to frost mage whether it is you want to play more ice lance focus more frostbolt focus more glacial spike focus maybe even frozen orb it could be that the tier set might make it way more interesting than it is and it does because it's the tier set and the hero talents are just Oh, they're so good man frostfire is just underestimated to a big degree because everybody and their mom are looking at sun fury because kale foss or oh, phoenixes but frostfire oh my god playing that hero talent feels way better than any other hero talent that mage has even if it's not as flashy it feels smooth as fuck i love frost mage it is really good Devastation has actually been the other big surprise in terms of gameplay in the War Within beta with particularly actually both hero talents were very very good but Flame Shaper was incredible. Now I do have to preface this by saying that the actual spec tree seemed to have be a little bit buggy with some of the talents might not have been either implemented or working properly. It seems that at least from the tooltip and the icon some of the talents were for some reason taken from augmentation they there was some weird overlap between these two specs in the hero talent tree so it was a little bit buggy i'm not sure if the talents that i got were the devastation ones or the augmentation ones or if it was just a visual bug but i digress with skill commander it feels like you're probably playing the same way as life which is fine skill commander it is pretty cool and having to actually focus around deep breath was very satisfying as a dragon even though i'm not a big fan of how it looks i'm never gonna get tired of saying this but deep breath is such a cool spell in terms of how it looks how it feels and how it makes you interact with the combat that having talents that work to buff it and to for you to use it a little bit more often is incredible and much 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 fun Flame Shaper, however, feels like it's the one hero talent where you can actually play Firestorm. And I have missed playing Firestorm since Dragonflight Beta, and I'm glad that I was able to play it because it made a little bit more sense to play it with Flame Shaper, and Engulf was very, very, very fun. The gameplay loop has been the most fun I've had on Devastation, and more fun than I've had with like 90% of the other range specs. So I'm going to be putting Devastation also into A tier behind Warlock, but it's <laughs> better than the A tier spec. Devastation is looking good, guys. Play it. Elemental Shaman has been slightly meh and a little bit disappointing. I'm not going to look at the numbers too much because it's just a little bit different. And I can feel the feedback that people have been giving about Shaman where they wanted a little bit of a rework. I'm not sure that Elemental, I'm not yet convinced that Elemental just needs a, a rework on the talent tree in the way that it has ac access to options. I do actually agree with people that it needs a rework in the sense that it's not very intuitive in how you build it. It feels like there's talent spread all over the place and it's not very clear which ones you want to get because they're a little bit obscure. Maybe that just is what Elemental is. It's a more difficult spec to understand and actually play. And you might laugh because you're probably only playing Elemental with the current tier set of Lava Burst and that is not elemental shaman once you lose that tier set you will see that elemental goes back to being one of the harder specs to play in the game and the hero talents don't really 
do much. I guess Stormbringer is kind of fun because you get Tempest. Tempest is really cool. And having to use Lightning Bolt in AoE instead of Chain Lightning does kind of switch your brain a little bit. And you're like, oh, I need to use Lightning Bolt now, even though I'm in AoE. That's not something that's very obvious once you pick up the Hero Talent, but you will have to like rethink a little bit. And that's the part of the fun. Having free Chain Lightnings is also really, really fun. And having to play with Lightning Rod is some of the most fun that I've had with Elemental, period. However, Farseer, dude, oh man, I don't know. I don't know about Farseer. I, I, I've, I've tried to like it. It's kind of boring. I'm not against having Ancestral Spirits assist me. But it feels like their impact is just super passive and not being super focused on elementals is kind of like a big loss for elemental for me. I will put it just behind Affliction. I feel like it's a little bit lackluster considering what Affliction has had going for it. Elemental is just way behind. Shadow Priest has been really fun. And Shadow Priest is one of the specs that I'm not a fan of with how the current version of the talent tree works for it. I was never a fan of losing minds here, even though this is for some reason what people wanted. Psychic Link is a boring way to play AoE when you build a resource and you spend it on one target. And there are situations where having minds here would be so much better with, I think it was called Mental Decay to kind of extend dots. Granted, Shadow Crash and Void Crash are a good change to how you apply AoE dots. I think you still drop the AoE dots by the time they come off cooldown slightly. I guess it kind of depends on how geared you are, I feel. But it still feels terrible to have to pick two talents to pick either Shadow Crash or Void Crash and then pick the talent that makes them apply the dots because this is so redundant. You're never going to play just Shadow Crash or just Void Crash. You're always going to pick the other talent. So it's not an actual choice. It's a price you pay to actually get the mechanic. I'm not particularly a big fan of this style of design and I'm not a big fan of not having an AoE resource consumer. I don't think Psychic Link is enough. I felt like the discrepancy between Psychic Link and Mines here was a much better way of giving you your damage profile and your identity within an AoE scenario. That aside, Void Weaver is the coolest shit since sliced bread. Oh my god, casting Void Turn while moving is the way Shadow Priest should be in the future and never change from that. And the Void, Rock, void Rift, Entropic Rift, whatever it's called. Yo! Yo! It's a black hole, dude! It's a black hole. Yes, you will summon black holes. Enjoy. And Archon has been a really interesting take on actually providing a little bit more support to your party while still doing giga damage. And having it revolve around Halo is an interesting choice. Whereas you have other hero talents that kind of revolve around a particular spell that's not that strong in terms of providing the identity for its class. I'm talking about Farseer, for instance, Farseer Elemental Shaman. Archon, however, is just different. I love it. I love playing Halo. And I think the majority of my enjoyment from Shadow Priest just came from the hero talent, which is a good sign because if you like current Shadow Priest, you will love it in the war within with the hero talents. And if you don't love Shadow Priest right now, you'll really like it with the hero talents in the war within. So probably still play Shadow Priest. It is a lot of fun. I will put Shadow Priest all the way into A tier. I want to put it in front of Frost Mage. Not in front, no, not in front of Augmentation. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Not until we get Mines here back. But that's just a personal choice. And now I'm back. Flame from the future. 24 hours in the future, actually. And I have played both BM and MM in their new reworks because they have been reworked with the hero talent in the dungeons. And oh my god, I was not impressed. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, listen, this could very well just be my personal impression. So we're going to start it off quick with BM because that's B smashy. That's first on the list. It's not F tier. It's not that bad. Listen, the rework definitely changes a lot of things in for the best. The class talent tree is actually way better with a lot fewer throughput nodes and overall like functionally it just it is actually better. In the actual spectra, you have some things moved around. A lot of the nodes, or at least a bunch of the nodes with the two pointers have gone away, and that's great. And listen, this is probably just one of the first iterations. I believe that Call of the Wild was swapped to the left-hand side of the talent tree, while the new reworked Bloodshed is on the right-hand side of the talent tree with actual upgraded capstones. And Bloodshed is actually a significant part of your identity. Now, whether or not that's going to be played, it's... You know, neither here nor there. And also, Beast Mastery right now is severely undertuned, unless I'm just terrible. 
Beast Mastery. Lol. If I can play Fire Mage, I think I can play Beast Mastery just fine. I am going to put Beast Mastery around B tier ish. I am just not a fan of overemphasis on kill command. It's fine if you like it, it's all great, but half of the talents are just kill command does more damage, kill command has more chance to reset, kill commands has a reduced cooldown that just gives you more focus, more kill commands, kill commands, that is not what Hunter is for me. But listen, it might be for you and that's fine, but that is the majority focus of the rework plus pack leader is pretty much just kill command has actually very few interactions with you doing anything with the pets period everything just happens passively behind the scene we've lost overall stampede and there's nothing else to bring it back considering that stampede in terms of like fun and flavor and emotional attachment is one of the things that hunters have been asking for for a very long time and we just got rid of it and there's nothing to replace it that's kind of where bm is marksmanship hunter is different because Sentinel and Dark Ranger are different. Let's talk about Marksmanship first of all in terms of the overall design of its spec tree. It's also slightly better. I do have one particular issue that I want to point out that I just cannot get out of my mind is with the rework of Wailing Arrow, which has gone from Beast Mastery, by the way, if I haven't mentioned that, but it's now only a Marksmanship thing and has been baked into how Wind Arrows work. Now, once you generate, I think at this point, 20 Wind Arrows, your aim shot turns into Wailing Arrow. Normally, that would be great if the Silence wouldn't be tied to Wailing Arrow. And I guess the Silence doesn't even exist anymore considering that you you cannot use this for the silence where it used to be one of a cool utility options that you could actually access now it's just a beefed up aim shot that just so happens to silence that kind of sucks because the silence part was the main attraction of wailing arrow outside of the damage and that's actually factoring zero amounts to your decision of pressing it because you do have to press it you're not gonna not press aim shot you're not gonna keep it on cooldown that's not how marksmanship plays with that out of the way, overall marksmanship is fine. I think the overall talent tree is slightly better than Beast Mastery. It's probably thematically the best spec tree for Hunter period, although I still haven't played survival, so I cannot really make that overarching statement just yet. And it plays fine. Marksmanship kind of always was the more fun of the three specs after the Dragonflight rework. It's not amazing, it doesn't blow my mind away like other specs, but it at least does the dungeons and AoE situations well. And also Serpent's Thing has kind of made it a much more impactful part of your rotation. By the way, also a big plus, Hydra's Bite is much more interesting right now, where if Aim Shot hits a target with Serpent's Thing, it spreads Serpent's Thing to other targets. Neat! That's a cool interaction that I can get behind. Now it comes down to the hero talent. Dark Ranger is just boring it doesn't do anything the only real thing that i've managed to see or feel like i am playing dark ranger is after i use black arrow which is kind of like a serpent's thing really doesn't feel like it does anything else it interacts with a couple of things behind the scene but you don't notice anything it just gives you a free kill shot it's about it. Uh, uh, we've already talked about the issues with the black arrow concept before and so far is just bland however sentinel is a much more interesting way of playing hunter period it's right now the most interesting hunter hero talent period which is great because it has to have at least one thing that's interesting and even that compared to what warlock has what mage has what even warrior has they're all kind of a little bit bland so if i were to rank marksmanship based on sentinel it would probably be in front of b tier maybe even lower a tier but dark ranger would be c tier at least so i'm gonna put it into let's say middle of the pack b tier marksmanship is slightly better actually i'm gonna put it in front i kind of like marksmanship a little bit more uh but dark ranger just pulls it back hunter is actually looking way better with the rework and it's going to be probably way better by the time the expansion releases considering that warlock has gone through these stages as well where the first iterations of the rework have been dog poop but hey if range dps is not your cup of tea you can check our melee tier list based on all the fun and all the hero talents and see exactly what melee is cooking up in the world within things might surprise you by the way so check it out